Hello and welcome to the FDT TV podcast. As always, my name is Ian and I'm joined by the lovely Mr. Michael Hawes. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Are you all right? Yeah, I am very, very good. As we briefly spoke about beforehand, West Ham played the West Ham way this weekend against Manchester United. We had lots of shots, we played fluidly and we lost 3-0, as is the West Ham way, as always. But it's not all bad. You can't you can't play well and lose and be upset. So, bittersweet, bit of a game where I think most West Ham fans, if you if they looked deep down inside, were not hoping out for much. Do you know what I mean? If we'd got a draw out of it, I think we would have been happy. We we played well. It was commendable. We just was out too open. Some silly mistakes, and it is what it is. Better team one on the night. Ah, oh, you must be a bit better clawing your way back to the title race. Yes, mate. Yeah, we've um, obviously two games last week um, because of the the FA Cup the week previously. Uh, so we had a midweek game in the the weekend games. Uh, Nottingham Forest um, looked fairly comfortable, but the big game yesterday. Do you know what? It was one of those ones. I I even said it last week that I wasn't confident about it, um, even though it was at home, and um, obviously I I could sit here and say. Yeah, upon reflection, there was a part of me that thought we was going to win. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't. I thought we were going to get tonked because mm-hmm. um, they kind of had the advantage over us because of the FA F- Cup result um, and obviously snatched a, a draw against us at, at, um, at Anfield. So <clears throat> they've been on a great run of form. So it was nice to um, to kind of stick the knife in <laughs> and... Uh, and get the three points. There's yeah. a lot of Liverpool fans, I think, were quiet, giving it all the big end <laughs> beforehand, and yeah, 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 definitely crying at the end. Um, but it was it was funny because it was one of those ones where you you think you're going to lose, but as soon as you hear other people tell you you're going to get tonked, you're like, Woof, no, we'll show you. Yeah, and um, and we did, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the, the result, three one. And I've got to say. Four goals scored by Arsenal and um, three absolute howlers. Mm. Um, I think the the first goal, in fact, no, four howlers because Alisson should have done better with um, Martinelli's shot to, to start off with, but Saka put it away. Uh, the the goal that we conceded, I don't know what the hell we, was going on there. Um, and then Martinelli, the, the, the pouncing on... Um, Van Dijk and uh, Allison's mistake, and then the final goal <laughs> through the legs of um, of Allison from Trossard. So yeah, I'm I'm fucking well happy with that. Mm. The fact that they were shit goals, I'm I'm really really happy with that. <laughs> that well. matter how they're going, as long as they're going in for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, speaking about results, obviously every week we make some predictions and mm-hmm. we get three points for a correct result. Uh, oh, sorry, a correct score, one point for a correct result and no points if you don't get anything. Um, so, I mean, we made some predictions on those games, Manchester United, West Ham and Arsenal, Liverpool. So, Mike, can you give us a rundown of what our results were for this week? Yes. Uh, so there were four games that we predicted, as I mentioned, because of the FA Cup game. So we had Nottingham Forest versus Arsenal, West Ham versus Bournemouth. And then, as you mentioned, United versus uh, West Ham and Arsenal Liverpool. So for the first game, Forest versus Arsenal, you went for 2-1 to Forest. I went 3-1 to Arsenal. Score was 2-1 to Arsenal. So one point for me, zero points for you. Uh, West Ham Bournemouth, you went 1-0 to Bournemouth. And I went 2-1 to Bournemouth. The score was 1-1 to zero points there. Man United, you went 2-1, sorry, 2-1 to Manchester United. I went 2-1 to West Ham. Score was 3-0, as you mentioned. So one point to you, zero points to me. And then the last game, uh, you went 1-1. I went 2-1 to Liverpool. The score was 3-1 Arsenal. So zero points there. So the grand totals, one point each for the week. And therefore, Ian, you have moved up to 25 points. And I am still in the lead on 34. Oh, very Um, good. So we're gaining points still. There's still the uh, the nine point margin, which I'll, I'll happily take. But that's only three correct for scores, and you're back in it. Um, mm. Yeah. So we move on to to this weekend, the um, the the presenter derby, West Ham yep. versus Arsenal, and then um, one of the standout games that I think we predicted or we're going to predict this week, a team who have hit uh, a bit of form that we were 
calling the whipping boys at the start of the season. But my yeah. God, are they putting up a fight? Uh, Luton versus Sheffield United. It is, yeah, it's um, exciting. Sorry. It's exciting. Mm. It's, it's, yes, Luton, it uh, is if you're a Luton fan. Yeah, I mean, uh, people keep talking about managers that getting promoted and going into bigger teams with things moving about. I've got to think, you've got to look at the Luton manager, haven't you? For, for if you're a bigger team, surely that that name gets at least uh, a look in. Um, if he's able to do it on on the budget that he's on, then surely he will be able to do it with a huge budget. Here's Don't a question know. for you then. Go on. If um, if Luton's are safe, yep. at the end of the season, do you think he's a contender for manager of the season? Obviously, I know oh. he won't get it. It will come down to the one hundred percent manager that gets. With uh, the wins it. Yeah. I, I, and this is this is the difficulty. I think if you give if you give the top four managers that loot inside and say do as well as they've done, I don't think any of them would. Um Pep uh I think is too expansive for them. Um uh, obviously he's doing very well, but they are uh, arguably, on paper, the be- one of the best teams in the world, and I think that's the same for Klopp and Liverpool. Um, I think he, if you're playing on that Luton surface every week in week out, you can't do the high press; doesn't work. Um, and I think Arteta, he's he's <sighs> he's working well with some of the younger players, but again, he's I think he, it would be a challenge too far for him. Um, I, I don't think he's got the required experience to be able to to do that job and I think at, at the four of them I think Emery would probably do the best because he's used to managing that little aside but but again he's 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 at Aston Villa they're playing very well uh they're full of confidence but it's a little bit like Poch at Tottenham a couple of years ago it's lots of things have happened in the right way at the right time and it's all mm-hmm. come together to lead to a really good season I ha- can he do it next season that's where the question lies. Um, but yeah, I think he would do better. But yeah, I think... Is, 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 who is it? Is Rob Ed- Edwards, is it? Rob Edwards? I don't know. I can't remember what his name is. It's really bad, isn't it? But I, th- I, I think when... If Moyes leaves at the end of the season, I think certainly we've got to pay attention and go, hmm, is that someone you give an opportunity to? From From not far from the area... Um, he's doing the right things in the right way. Fits our sort of mentality and way to play. Could it? Could it be a match made in heaven? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but moving on to the scores that we think is yes. gonna is gonna be. So, so first up is is Luton versus Sheffield United. Yep. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Um. You can go first. So, um, Sheffield United have conceded the most goals at this point in a season for any team ever in the Premier League. There's a stat for you. Um, They show glimpses of playing well. Bereton Diaz has come in and scored a goal. Um, They they have moments. James Bogle looks all right. But they just... They haven't got it in them. I think they're they're too far gone. I um, mean, they lost five nil again, didn't they, um, at the weekend? And I think that the fans are on it straight away. As soon as you lose possession, they're on the team. Um, they showed that by they were walking out in ten minutes. Um, and it's not it's not a good place to be. I think it's a it's, it is a mission impossible um, for them to stay up. Luton, I think, will capitalise on it. They're flying high at the minute, scoring lots of goals, playing uh, very confidently. Um, and, and I think they're going to take take it to Sheffield United and I think they're going to win 3-1. Okay. Um, obviously, we mentioned earlier, um, just off camera, that this is a bit of a six-pointer. Um Obviously, it's, it's very tight down the bottom. So, you just looking, you've got uh, Everton one point behind Luton in the relegation battle at the moment. Um, I really like 
what Luton are doing. And obviously, at the start of the season, I've already mentioned it. Uh, we we pipped them for the um, the whipping boys, and we didn't think that they were going to be. Um, I think we thought they were going to be where Sheffield United are. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I think obviously they are a little bit fortunate at the moment, obviously with the points deduction that Everton have had, uh, because they would be sitting within the bottom three had had that not happened. Yeah. But that being said. Given their merit, they have been playing some really nice football. Obviously, they've taken some, I wouldn't necessarily say big scalps, but obviously pulling out a draw against Liverpool. No one could see that coming. When they were winning at one point, it mm. obviously took, I think, the 97th minute um, for, for Diaz to equalise. Um, so it's a, a special moment for the, for him, obviously, given the, the, what was happening with his dad at the time. Um, but the the fact that Liverpool, uh, yeah, the Liverpool were in that position anyway, the two one down against Luton, um, no one saw that coming. So they've they have caused some teams some problems this year. Um, I I agree with you actually. I do, uh, do you know what? Obviously, with the amount of goals that Sheffield are conceding at the moment and the the a bit of a purple patch that Luton are having, I'm actually going to go four um, one to Luton on that one, just to be slightly different. Yeah, no, it's fair enough. That is a fair enough call for that game. Um, be an interesting one to watch. It could end up being Sheffield United's comeback story, and that's the start of it, but we'll wait and see. Mm. Uh, and moving on then to the Sunday, where West Ham take on Arsenal. Uh, I think we're at home, are we? Or Yes. So uh, I'll go first, then, because we're at home. Um, mm-hmm. I don't hold out much hope. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> Arsenal are, are riding high on confidence. They are scoring goals again. Um, we are not scoring goals. Uh, we're struggling. I mean, we struggled to draw against Bournemouth. Uh, we, we were outclassed. We were outclassed again against Manchester United. I think this is going to be three losses on the bounce. Um, uh, we may get a consolation goal, but I'm going to go for a big one. 4-1. To Arsenal, I just see you opening us up, and 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 then because it's free on the bounce that have been terrible, I think fans are going to get on their backs. Okay, this for me is going to go one of two ways. Okay, um, <clears throat> Arsenal are going to be going for revenge, aren't they? Because you absolutely tonked us three nil at the Emirates, um, at a point when no one really saw that result coming, yeah. given our home form at that particular point. Uh, just off the back of a draw against Liverpool as well. And um, we we were hurting after that game. So we are going to be looking for revenge. However, I think it very much depends on how the game goes. I think if you score first, we may be in trouble and might sneak a draw. If we score first, I have no doubt that we'll concede and we'll concede a really shitty goal. Yeah. Um, but I think if if we play because we we were dominating Liverpool yesterday, certainly in the first half. In the second half, obviously, it took for a couple of mistakes to um, to to kind of capitalise on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I yeah, I think realistically we need to score first, and if we score first, then I think that we will charge on. Uh, if we concede first, I think is going to be be a bit of an issue so i'm gonna go full confidence i am gonna go for uh what am i gonna go for i'm gonna go for do you know what i'm gonna be bold on this one i'm gonna go five one to arsenal oh go more than me we'll wait and see we'll wait and see it's an exciting weekend of football so uh what you should do is join in this competition yourselves go over to the youtube channel Put in what you think the uh, results of those games are. See if you can do better uh, than us. Um, but leading on to the major question of the week, Mike. To potch or not to potch? Um, he's he's not got the backing of the Chelsea uh, the Chelsea's faithful with uh, another defeat four one to or four two to Wolves, isn't it? Um, yep. With an own goal in there as well uh, players are getting booed off fans are singing we're fucking shit um, and there's not 
not a history of Todd Bohe, who is the man in charge, uh, giving managers time um, that you'd necessarily expect. Uh, but having spent over a billion pounds or a billion dollars, whatever way you want to look at it, um, you expect results. Um, now, my two pence worth, and then I'll get into some questions for you. Thomas Tuchel was doing all right. They sacked him. Um, and I think that was to make a change. We're going to rubber stamp our change on this. We're going to get rid of everything that is um, Roman Abramovich, and we're going to start afresh. They brought in Graham Potter, who has started, started to build a foundation of youth coming through using that system at Brighton. I think they like the idea of that, uh, but they could not score goals. Had a philosophy, played some beautiful, fo- beautiful football at times, but could not score goals. They got rid of him, brought in Frank Lampard, who they thought would be a, a nice uplift for them. Um, bit of unfinished business, bit of a club legend coming back for the end of the season. They could not score goals. Um, now they've brought in Poch, who has never won anything in England, as far as I know. Um, I may be incorrect in that. He went over to France and managed Paris Saint-Germain and lost that in his first season uh, in a in a one-team league. Um, he, he, he won it the second season, I think. Um, but didn't really win anything that was un- was unexpected. Um, didn't challenge in the Champions League, um, even though he had Messi, Mbappe. Uh, who else? Was Neymar there at one point? I think he possibly was. I can't remember. But he had a decent team. He had a decent mm. team full of superstars. Just throw money at it. He didn't win anything. Um, he's gone over to Chelsea, and again, you can see they're playing some decent football at times. But they cannot score goals. Um, So, I mean, systematically, I think you have to look at, is it the manager, is it the players? Arsenal have been through this. Um, Unai Emery couldn't get it done. Um, Arteta's come in, you've given him the time, you've given him the backing, you've got rid of players. At Manchester United, Solskjaer couldn't get it done. They've brought in Ten Hag who's starting to get things done when he's got a fit team they're starting to get rid of bad wood they, the big Ronaldo saga at the beginning of the season don't know if you remember that but they're starting to back him in getting rid of players and again in January got rid of a lot more players and the, it's starting to turn now Chelsea have spent a billion pound on players now some of those players are very good. Some of those players nobody has ever heard of, and I think they were just trying to capitalise on, on, on that team's going for them, so we will get them instead because that means it, it, it weakens our rivals. It's not quite how it works in football. Um, but some are good, some are bad, some are somewhere in the middle. Um, their first team goalkeeper, gone. Well, both of them, actually. Mendy went to wherever, Kuwait, wherever it is, Saudi Arabia. And then they they loaned Kepper out. They bought in the Brighton keeper, who I don't think is that good. He's all right, but he's not a first-team top top draw goalkeeper. Um, But they still don't have a striker. The only real recognised striker they had in Borussia, they've loaned out to Fulham. Um, Good striker, injury-prone at the minute. So I get... You want him to grow and play a lot. Um, and Cuckoo, again, got some quality to, to lead the line, but he's injured a lot. Um, Cole Palmer is trying to drag that team by the scruff of his neck. Um, they just can't score the goals. Now, is it the manager or is it the players? That's question one I posed to you. Question two, do you think Poch will be given more time to uh, create some form of of legacy and philosophy within the club. Um, uh, Sub-questions to, if he does go, who do you think replaces him? There are a few managers who are being touted, uh, Xabi Alonso being one, Jose Mourinho, who's out of the club, being two. Do they try and lure Jurgen Klopp in? I don't know. Big money move. Who knows? Do they try and get a Xavi who's leaving Barcelona? Don't know. Do they go with Big Sam? 
or Neil Warnock? I don't know. What do you think? Well, Neil, Neil Warnock's just been snapped up for the Aberdeen job, so it's definitely not going to be uh, not going to be him. Um, so Big Sam's a possibility. Um, right. So in terms of your first question, um, to potch or not to potch? Yes. Or uh, yes. So I'll answer that question first. Um, um, I would say to potch. Okay. And do I think it's Pochettino or the players? I think it's a combination of both. Um, but I also think that the owner has to take some responsibility of this. Now, this isn't the the American League. It's not the the draft by you putting your bids in for the the top players or, or whatever or however the draft works. Yeah. Um, this and it's almost like a silent auction. I think is they see a player, they see what everyone else is doing, and then they come in with some astronomical fee and wages over so many years or whatever. It, yep. It's not worked like that. And I think that's one of the problems is because they've gone for um, the supposed talent and then obviously coming a cropper because there appears to be too many egos. Um, and egos, as we know, ruin dressing rooms. Yep. Um the 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 huge signing um transfer fees plus the the wages is obviously going to be a bit of a talking point for everyone because the amount of money that they spent you would theoretically think that they should be doing better mm -hmm. however obviously injuries aside because every team at some point comes up with um with injuries yep i think the players need to take some responsibility for the the performances they're putting on the pitch um, but at the same time, if you're not getting coached properly, then obviously you need to look at the coach. But we've seen, what, four four Chelsea managers in the last few years? Yep. At what point do you go, okay, maybe the, the problem's not the manager? Yep. It's 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 a tough one because obviously we've, I, I get that we're in a, a results-driven business. Um, but if you're constantly changing the manager, you're going to get the same old story, a new manager bounce, and then things are going to kind of fall away a little bit. Um, even more so nowadays, because I'd say that the Premier League is probably the most competitive that I remember it. Yeah. Where effectively you could go to anyone and anyone can turn you over. Yeah. Um, give it, given the circumstances. So I, th I think... We've obviously seen the fruits of the labour of sticking with a manager over the last few years and giving that manager a bit of time, a few transfer windows to obviously get, his, um, get the players that he wants in, get the deadwood out. And we're obviously, I wouldn't say we're reaping the um, the rewards because we've got one FA Cup um, to our names over the, the, the last couple of um, last couple of seasons. So um, I... I would say stick with Poch, mm -hmm. but I think further work needs to be done with the squad uh, yeah. in terms of trying to ship ship out some dead wood. And like like you've already said, if they get a recognised striker in, they they could cause some damage. And I think that's one of the things because obviously goals and winning breeds confidence. But yeah. because they're hitting the woodwork, getting goals chalked off, and all this sort of business, mm -hmm. it's it's very damaging i think to to a team's mentality um but maybe they're already going into the games already beaten you know what i mean like because yep. they're on such a, a hit and miss run of form i i i think they possibly go into the game already defeated and we had this conversation a, a few weeks ago um because obviously chelsea started putting a few back-to-back -back results together and you asked the question, do I think that they will, uh, this will kickstart this season? And I said at the time, no, because they've been so hit and miss. Mm -hmm. And I th I think that is going to be the case. I'll be very surprised. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say they're going to drop further down the table, but I'll be very surprised if they finish in the bottom half of the table. They're currently sitting in 11th now. Um, yeah, and I'll be extremely surprised if they do finish bottom half. It'll be funny. Um once giants of the Premier League. Yep. But then again, everyone has the day and they could recruit really well in um, over the 
the next transfer window or whatever. Obviously, they've got some investigations going on over financial fair play or whatever. So it'll be interesting to see what does happen. But I uh, I would say stick stick with Poch. Yep, fair enough. Fair enough. It's one of those, it's a hard one. You'd like to, to be able to sit down with Todd Bowie and go, what's your five-year plan? Where where do you see you going out? Where are your key milestones? Because I think if he turns around and says to win the Premier League, I think you go, mate, you're, you're well out of it. You've got not a clue. I think if he if he's, they've got a lot of young players, a lot of prospects that have some raw talent, and I think that's blatantly obvious. I think Mudrich is one of those. Uh, when you look at him, he's a very very talented person on the football. Um, but it's growing as a player with experience, with bringing in making those right decisions at the right times, is what makes players great, isn't it? If they can do that game in game out. Um, mm. you, you have to look at now, I think, for Chelsea, you have to look at some of their senior players, Raheem Sterling being one. Uh, do you trust him to go, right, boys, let's pick up the team, let's let's carry this? I personally wouldn't. I think he's a flair player. I think when he's full of confidence, the team's playing well around him, he will put in performances, but I don't think he's one to carry. Thiago Silva. You look at him and you go, actually, he is still putting in an effort. He is still trying his very best. You can see that. But he's also 42. Um, so, I mean, how how often can you rely on him to, to do it? I think this is the last season he's going to be there. And then after that, you go, actually, where are the senior players at Chelsea? Because I don't think they've got any anymore. Jorginho is a prime example. I think if you put him in the middle of the pitch and you let him run it, you get a lot better result because he's been there, he's done it, he's won it all. Um, Okay, he may not be the quickest of players, but I think he proved the other day, actually, he can still run a football game, he can still pull the strings from midfield. Um, They they haven't got him no more. Uh, Who else have they? They got rid of Rudiger at the back. I think if they if they'd managed to keep hold of him, different story again. Yeah. Um, Kante's gone. Yeah, uh, and say so Kante is another one. You wouldn't expect him to pick the game up by the scruff of the neck and carry it, but he will not stop running for ninety minutes of that game. Um, mm. I, I think that's what they're lacking now is a little bit of experience, a little bit of guidance, and a little bit of of those ilk of players to go right. Come on, let's put in a big tackle. Let's go. Let's go and get it. If we don't win, at least we've we've thrown ourselves into it. Um, will that come with time? Possibly. Uh, how much time do they give, get given? I don't know. Um, I think what you have to look at at Chelsea as well is a lot of these players are on eight, nine-year contracts. They're not going anywhere anytime soon because Chelsea are going to want to reclaim some of the money. And some of the money that they have put up is silly. Yeah. Um now, I don't think you can blame Todd Bohe for uh, p- putting his money where his mouth is. Um, I don't think anyone can say that. If he, if, if everyone was talking about Moyes Caicedo at Brighton being this phenomenal midfielder, Brighton said 100 million, he went, yep, there you go. Actually, he's listening to the hype of all the pundits. He's listening to the hype of all the fans. I'm sure he's got a, an extensive scouting network because you don't spend that sort of money without it. Um, and he's gone and got him, and actually he's gone to Chelsea and gone, oh, this isn't quite the same as what it was at Brighton. Now, is that change of place? Possibly. Is that change of team around him? Possibly. Is that other people lacking in confidence? Possibly. I think it will get better with time. I do. Mm. But you can't be... And I think you, you, you will understand this more than most. Pepe was a player that was, was um, uh, unfortunately, the victim of his own price tag that had yep. nothing to do with him. Um, I think for the money, you get a £100 million player, you go, right, you need to be tearing teams apart on your own every week in, week, in, week out. The 21-year-old lad has got no control over his price tag um, other than the fact he's being sold. If he'd gone for £5 million, would people be digging him out saying, well, he's rubbish? No, because he's only a £5 million player. Hmm. Now, that is a, still a stupid amount of money to everybody else, but it's only £5 million. It's not £100. Um, 
Yeah, it's an interesting one. I personally, if it's me, I don't think Potch is the right man for that job. Um, I, I, and this is going to be controversial. I think Mourinho is, and I'm not saying you're going to get him long term, but for the first two years, you're going to win something. You're going to get some confidence. You're going to get some experience. He's going to upset a few people. Yes, as is as is Mourinho. Um, but he's going to stabilise the ship and then you bring in somebody. I think bringing in Alonso to that team is not going to work. Um, again, too inexperienced. I I do have a sneaky feeling. I do have a sneaky feeling and I might even chuck a tenner on it that Jurgen Klopp is going to Chelsea. Okay. And, and the reason I say that is he is leaving Liverpool he is one of the managers, if you were Chelsea, you'd go, okay, give us your dream five managers to come in. He's going to be in most people's dream five, I think. Young players, fast players, all could potentially do the high press that he likes. And it, when Todd Bowie goes, I'm going to pay you £200 million a year to come and win me stuff, even if you need a break, I don't think he, he can turn that down. Um, I'd be interested to see if he does go there, whether there's a, a bit of an asthma epidemic that breaks out. In, I'm sure uh, there. I'm sure there will be. Well, the, the 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 air quality in West London is shocking. It's all it's all <laughs> the buses, um, it's all the buses. It's terrible. But yeah, now I I think if they change manager, I think Klopp comes in. I've got to be honest. That's that's where I think it's going. Fair enough. Can't I... say it's definite. It's a theory. Again, I've laughed at some of your. Um... Your predictions and your statements before. Um, I've learned my lesson <laughs> quite extensively <laughs> to um, to not not so much take these things with a pinch of salt, but to actually note this. So I think I think we should put it in the comments section just so we can look back and go, hmm, you heard it here first, yeah. FDTTV. Yeah, I mean it's one of those. If you're Todd Bowie and you want to make it, you want to make a statement. You have to go and get one of the world's best. And Poch is, he was known for that time at Tottenham. I think he's riding on those coattails a little bit. That actually they, yep. again, as Emery at Aston Villa, lots of things came together at the right time. Um, and, and that happened. Klopp has taken Liverpool from being obscure to sort of the best of the rest team to being, actually, these are competing for the top rank every year they're competing for the Champions League every year I, I, and he's still bringing through young players and, and decent players I think you you put him into that Chelsea team I think you go well you've got some of these players for the next 10 years have at it here's a billion quid again go for it I think you, See, I think he wins it's it's not a bad shout, but I I'll be completely honest with you. I would say if that is the case, he's probably going to take a year out and then may look to get back into it. But I just I just wonder how Liverpool fans would feel. Obviously, being told right now that Jurgen Klopp is not coming out. That's a message he could have delivered at the end of the season. Yep. Um, I don't know why. It, it seemed a bit of a strange one for me to for that. Just completely, out. yeah, completely Mid out of the blue. Yeah, and midway through the season, obviously, we you mentioned something last week um, about a potential scandal coming out for for X Y Z reason. So is he kind of like jumping shit before the shit hits the fan sort of thing? Yeah. Um, again, which is another possibility, but I just wonder how. Liverpool fans would feel if he did leave <laughs> Liverpool at the end of the season and move to Chelsea within the window where he was supposedly taking a break. Um, would would you feel that that would damage his reputation as Liverpool, or do you think he's going to go, regardless, go down as one of Liverpool's greatest managers? I don't think Liverpool fans will like it. They don't like anything, do they? Um, let's be honest. Um, True. I, I think you would feel a little bit. Oh, Hard done by. Um, for that reason, I mean, is there a non-compete clause in his in his contract? Who knows. Um, 
but I think you would feel hard done by. But but if money talks, it, and I don't if if you, if you went round the the, the uh, every seat in Anfield and said you have I'm going to give you a hundred million pound a year, but you have to support Chelsea now. I don't think there's anybody who can go, nah. Liverpool, you could have a soft spot for Liverpool, but for a hundred million pound a year, it's not even support, is it? It's go and work for Chelsea. I don't think anyone can turn it down. I, I mm. just, I, I can't, I can't fathom how you do that. I suppose it's very easy to sit here and say, if you were to ask me that question about working with Spurs, I'd turn you, I'd tell you to. To absolutely do one. You give me a hundred million pound a year and work for heavy light. That's what, that's what I was just about to say. It's easy for me to sit here and go, no, I'd never do it. If someone's paying me that sort of money, I will I will wash the toilets and fucking yeah. yeah, it's a bit mad. It is a bit mad. Um but that's that's one question. The next question I have for you, Mike. Should Gareth Southgate be sacked immediately? He was spotted at the weekend at the Johan Cruyff Stadium, watching Jordan Henderson to see how he, he lines up for Ajax. Um, lots of people are calling for his head already. I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. Um, yep. But quite clearly, Jordan Henderson's in the England squad again. Well, he never, le- he never left, did he? Uh, even when yep. he was playing in front of six people for a year. Um, what What do you make well, of it? Not even a year, was it? No. What, but what do, you, what do you make of it? Do you think Gareth Southgate's completely lost the plot or do you think he never had it? I, I, I genuinely, I, I, I don't know. I, I tend, I tend to ignore it all until obviously we get to, to tournaments like this Nations League or whatever it is, and I've, I've really, have lost all interest in it. And the only reason I get caught up in a whole, um, Euros and the World Cup is because it's football during the summer where yeah. we, we don't really get that unless, unless we've got COVID or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't know. Obviously, he, he come out at his beginning of his tenure saying it all goes on form and, and all the sort of business. But I I genuinely, I'll be honest with you, I, can, I really don't care. <laughs> um, Fair enough. I mean, I, 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 the only, I, I, I say that quite flippantly because I think we can argue till the, the, till the cows come home um, about team selection and, and all this sort of stuff. He's got his group of players that he absolutely loves and adores. Maguire's another one um, that you'll constantly see on uh, on the international duty. Form goes out of the window. I think what he has is he's got possibly eight or nine players within the squad, which are his dead certs. Yeah. And then the, other, the rest is if they're fit and there's possibly kind of like a few fringe players. Mm-hmm. That he'll go. Oh, actually, they're they're doing all right during the season. Yeah. And for for those call ups, for those those like two or three call ups where they, it is actually done on form. Mm-hmm. But it's only on form to the point where they're on the bench. Yeah. Or within the squad, they're not even on the bench. Um, I think that's what he's um he's trying to kind of get around. But for for me, I I like what he's done at, at tournaments. The, we can't we can't deny how well he's done over the last few times or the last few tournaments that we've done. Um, he did put Harry Kane on corners. He did, he did, but but we then went on to what a semi final, then a final, and after that, I did say at the beginning of the season, and I'm going to say it again now: we're not getting out of group stage. But that remains to be seen in the that's, summer. That's my prediction. Um, but yeah, I. I I would say possibly his time will be done after this tournament. Yeah, I I think so. I think he will either step back or he'll be sacked. Uh, and and so part of me part of me wishes he'd gone out and said, "Look, I'll try my best. Time to pass the reins on because it's, this is hard going. I will give everyone someone my full support, but I'm not the man to to take it." And I, I think you always like to back yourself, don't you? But the England job is 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 always it, it's the unwinnable job, isn't it? Yep. Um, and I think he he's probably the only manager who could have gone out on top and been remembered um, 
nicely. I don't think that will happen. I don't think that will happen. Uh, but have you got anything else to add to this week's podcast? Mm, no. I can't think of anything. Nothing football related. No? I just want to give a shout out to Stephen Bunting for winning the uh, the Masters um, yesterday. Well deserved. Well I mean, he played well all tournament. But yeah, on to, uh, on to the next one. Mm. Other than that, nothing. Fair enough. Well, in that case, him. until next week, I've been here. I've been Mike. And we will see you very, very soon. Goodbye. Whoop, whoop.